The bones that connect the upper extremity to the trunk are clavicle or collarbone and the scapula or shoulder blade. The parts of them that we can feel beneath the skin can be seen in this dissection. Here's the spine of the scapula. Here's the clavicle. In the dry skeleton, here's the clavicle. Here's the scapula. The proximal long bone of the upper extremity, the humerus, articulates with the scapula at the shoulder joint. The scapula and clavicle articulate with the bones of the thorax at one point only, here, at the sternoclavicular joint. The lateral end of the clavicle articulates with this projection on the scapula, the acromion, forming the acromioclavicular joint. Apart from this one very movable bony linkage, the scapula is held onto the body entirely by muscles. It's thus capable of a wide range of movement, upward and downward, and also forward and backward around the chest wall. Looking at the clavicle from above, we can see that it's slightly S-shaped with a forward curve to its medial half. At its medial end, this large joint surface articulates with the sternum. At the lateral end, this smaller surface articulates with the scapula. On the underside, massive ligaments are attached, here laterally and here medially. The scapula is a much more complicated bone. The flat part, or blade, is roughly triangular with an upper border, a lateral border, and a medial border. The blade isn't really flat. It's a little curved to fit the curve of the chest wall. This smooth concave surface is the glenoid fossa. It's the articular surface for the shoulder joint. Above and below the glenoid fossa are the supraglenoid tubercle and the infraglenoid tubercle, where two tendons are attached, as we'll see. A prominent bony ridge, the spine of the scapula, arises from the dorsal surface and divides it into the supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa. At its lateral end, the spine gives rise to this flat, angulated projection, the acromion, which stands completely clear of the bone. The clavicle articulates with the scapula here at the tip of the acromion. This other projection, looking like a bent finger, is the coracoid process. Here's how the clavicle and the scapula look in the living body. Round the edge of the shallow glenoid fossa, a rim of fibrocartilage, the glenoid labrum, makes the socket of the shoulder joint both wider and deeper. This flat ligament, the coracoacromial ligament, joins the coracoid process to the acromion. Here's the acromioclavicular joint. Two strong ligaments, the trapezoid in front and the conoid behind, fix the underside of the clavicle to the coracoid process. There's very little movement at the acromioclavicular joint. As we've seen, the medial end of the clavicle articulates with the sternum at the sternoclavicular joint. Strong ligaments between the clavicle and the sternum and between the clavicle and the underlying first rib keep the two bones together, but permit an impressive range of motion up and down, and backward and forward. To understand the shoulder joint, let's get acquainted with the upper half of the humerus. This is the head of the humerus. The articular surface is half of a sphere. On the anterior aspect is a well-marked groove, known as the bicipital groove, because the tendon of the long head of the biceps runs in it. At the proximal end of the groove are the lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle. Because it's between two tubercles, the bicipital groove is also known as the intertubercular groove. Down here on the lateral aspect of the humerus, almost halfway down the bone, is a rough spot, the deltoid tuberosity. Here's the shoulder joint, also known as the glenohumeral joint. 
This loose sleeve of tissue which encloses the joint is the joint capsule. The capsule doesn't hold the bones together. It's quite a weak structure. What it does is to permit movement. The structures which hold the two bones together are muscles, as we'll see. Here's the tendon of one of those muscles. Let's look at the movements that can occur at the shoulder joint. Movement forward and upward is called flexion. Movement downward and backward is called extension. Movement away from the side of the body is abduction. The opposite movement is adduction. Rotation which moves the front of the arm towards the body is internal rotation. Rotation the other way is external rotation. Here's the clavicle for an easy start. On the scapula, here's the blade, the glenoid fossa, the supraglenoid and infraglenoid tubercles, the spine of the scapula, the supraspinous and infraspinous fossa, the acromion, and the coracoid process. Here's the proximal humerus with the head, the greater tubercle, and lesser tubercle the bicipital groove, and the deltoid tuberosity. Here's the sternoclavicular joint, and here's the acromioclavicular joint, with the conoid ligament and the trapezoid ligament. On the scapula, here's the glenoid labrum and the coracoacromial ligament. Lastly, here's the capsule of the shoulder joint, 